it's me, Dr. Lee, and thank you for joining me. We're talking about being sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm calling this one entanglement. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired of entanglement? And when I say entanglement, I mean caught in a trap, ensnared. A complicated or compromising relationship or situation, maybe. An involvement, complication, a mix-up. And it can be a love affair. That can be difficult to escape sometimes. Whenever you think about entanglement, Sometimes people come into your life, come into our lives to, let me use one of these words here, to, to trap you in some type of situation or to make something complicated, to have you in some type of mix-up. And before you know it, you're involved with something else that, you know, you may even, don't even know the person, but because the person have entangled you in it, now you in it. And you know Nine times out of ten, you know, it's just the devil. And most like I said, nine times out of ten. I don't want to say the perfect ten out of ten, but it's the, um, the devil using that that person to entangle you in something that's going to be negative or have a negative outcome. And like I said here, I said um, a love affair. You see that all the time. You can watch movies and see how people get involved in love affairs and they get entangled in something and they all mix up and, you know, this person get harmed or this person, you know, they you know they can't handle it. They lose their mind. They nut up or, you know, however you want to I say go crazy. And it just becomes a big mess. But you also, people can um, involve you in things on your job. And... And the devil don't care how he uses it, how he entangle you in things. But let's say if you're at your job, maybe, you know, in your neighborhood, you could be, I mean, anyway, it doesn't matter. And you are totally innocent. But because this person wants to entangle you in something, they involve you. And you hear so many times where a person had nothing to do with the situation and they the one that got hurt or harmed or they the one got cut or, you know, went to jail because the person that was like, orchestrating whatever the entanglement they were the one that actually you know saying were you know saying the, the problem or that were mad or that was trying to you know to hustle something or to con somebody out of something and then it's use somebody totally innocent a friend or family member to involve them you know you just see many times where a person you know have you know i know if you ain't seen nowhere else if you ain't seen the news you've seen it you know on a movie or somewhere i mean if you watch movies but um my example is you see where someone got in trouble with the law because somebody entangled them in it. You know, they, they actually were innocent. And the person may say, hey, will you pick me up and take me to the store? And they'd go take them to the store. And now it's a big mix of the person that went there and they then, you know, did some, some negative stuff in the, um, the store. You know, if you went in and fight somebody, you know, cut them, rob them, whatever it is. And the person that's driving, you know, not even involved but they become accessory to the foolishness. And you're like, well, I was just giving a store to go get something to drink or pick up a, a a snack. I didn't know, you know, he or she was going to do that. And so, let's say people can buy you. Oh, will you take this uh, package for uh, me to so-and-so? And you pick up the package and you take them to so-and-so and you don't even realize it's like drugs in there. So now you're involved. You all tangle up in you know, a mix up or something that you have, you weren't going to, I mean, you had no involvement in really, but... You were involved because the person asked you to do it, and you did it because you were the friend, family member, or whoever. And, like, and the same thing happened at jobs. You can have a job and get tangled in some um, stuff. People like to um, entangle you in, like, to, like, gossip. They'll be talking about, like, another coworker. Here they come want to put you into it, and that way they go back and say, you say it. you be like, I ain't said anything. The whole job going to know I don't say nothing about anybody. I mind my, my business. So people use all kinds of things to involve you in something. Um, many years ago, I had someone to call me and they wanted, um, me to come help them with their boyfriend. Want me to come help you with your boyfriend. The boyfriend's trying to break in. What am I going to do? And I said, call the police. You know, it was like, I mean, I can't remember. It was 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. It was like, um, 
They wanted me to 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 come. You know, first night I said, call the police. Oh, they're not gonna do nothing. They're not gonna do anything. If the police not gonna do anything, what am I going to do? I said that is a trick from the devil. You go over there. Yeah, I don't I didn't don't even know the person that will. But like I said, to know um the um the the boy definitely know the the boyfriend. And can you imagine what kind of you know mess could have happened? You know, I mean, what could have popped off? And so you have to like we have to grow in the sermon. When I say you. We have to have to continue to grow. So when things like that come up, pop up, we don't like, okay, all right, the Lord tell me I got a bad feeling about this, you know. Or somebody call you, will you come, you know, pick me up outside the road, I'm, bro I'm broke down. You're like, okay, well, why that person didn't call their mother or they, the so-and-so? They live right there in the city or their uncle. They call me, oh, so, okay, I, I, hell, I'll call AAA for you or some towing company uh, for you. I'm not I'm not coming out, you know, because you don't, I mean, unless you actually say you really, really know the person and you may be knowing them for a long time and you trust them but people play so many games and you have to you have to ask god for it um for guidance because they want to entrap you in something they want to get you tangled up in something and most of the time when they do that it's in it's it's something like i said something negative it's something it's something bad so if somebody come by and especially if you're a younger person you have to be like okay my gut feeling telling me, okay, this is this is a no no. I'm not going. I'm not going with these person these these people um today. And you can you know be a life changer. It can be a, a game changer because these people are going to have to do something um silly or do something do something something dirty to to cause you to get in trouble or to to mess up something. But all because you just riding with them and laughing, they didn't want to get in trouble by themselves. So they involve you. And it could be the same thing. You could be at school. You have some, you know, your child or whatever, and the 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 the, the teacher, you know, to, and tell you, you know, don't, you know, saying don't don't eat candy. I was making some. Don't 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 no no eating in the class. And your 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 buddy bring. I'm saying all kind of saying kind of candy. Give you some. Y'all sneak it. And you're having a good time eating the candy. Then your buddy say, you know what? I'm going to get the bubble gum. I'm going to put it in the teacher's seat whenever she or he sit down. It's going to get all of their, you know, their clothes or whatever. And then. You know, been a child not thinking. You, um, the buddy does it, and then she said, "Okay, somebody been um put gum down and chewing da da da, and you know it's no candy. They mess up my hands. I'm sending them to the principal's office, and when they say that, nine times ten, somebody I always see or somebody hear the conversation or like with anything with kids. Most time they tell another friend, oh, you got the gum. They put up under the teacher, you know, chair. But all of them was chewing gum. And they say, you know, everybody's getting called to the office, like." The four of y'all getting called to the office because one person bought the gum, passed it out to all you all because they want to invite you, but they put the gum up on the, in the teacher chair. But you already know you're breaking the rule when you're supposed to be chewing the gum in the classroom. So just something I made up. So with that, you know, people entangle you in all kind of ways. It doesn't matter the age because people don't like to get in trouble by themselves. They When they fall, they want somebody to fall with them. So... Pray for no sin and discernment and just know that people entangle you in something is like so real and it's on and it comes in all different levels, ages, colors, races, whatever. It doesn't matter. It could be people you know and people you don't know. I have the Bible verse here, Proverbs five and twenty two, and I got two different versions. I'm gonna read the NLT. An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. That's Proverbs 5 and 22, the NLT. An evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. Then this is Proverbs 5 and 22, the NIV. And it says, The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. So know that people that do evil deeds, their own sins. They, you know what I'm saying? They, the cards hold them. It hold them. That's what this Bible verse here is saying. Excuse me. So, we have um people that that have like some bad intent that are evil. Proverbs five and twenty two tells us that their own sin that they are ropes that catch and hold them. So don't you worry about that person. That person will get theirs, and you keep on praying, being a believer of God, and like I said, grow in discernment so you. When these opportunities come to present itself and they're not something that you should be entangled with, it's going to cause you something negative, some type of harm, or, you know, like I said, it's some type of love affair because people love to fall for love. And it's interesting, like now on um, the different social media thing, you hear all the time people fall in love. 
and it's some 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 mess come out of it and it's just you know it's just best to pray and ask God, okay God this person you want me to be talking um and talking to you know and then God you know Holy Spirit can the same can lead you and guide you because say no you don't want to get talking no I'm talking that person that person got some bad they're still talking to their ex and now you know you're in some type of um some type of mess and a matter of fact I um met a young lady that that happened to she just happened to be I happened to be ordering my 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 food and a girl behind me walked by and she said to her co-worker about the girl but I uh, not her it's what she said but anyhow you know you know there's some type of love a love affair and I was like, okay then she started telling me about the, the the love affair I'm like okay wow but with that just know that the entanglement is unreal and Satan will use whatever he can to cause you know um, cause things in our life so don't be sidetracked because somebody said they love you and they they didn't you know they in love with you and they just met you two days ago i'm not saying it's not possible but then on the third or fourth day they're asking you for money can you send them a thousand dollar western union this do you know but don't don't fall for that kind of stuff and i'm going to pray father i come to you standing on proverbs 5 and 22 in your words it says, an evil man is held captive by his own sins. They are ropes that catch and hold him. Father, I know that any time you come in contact with a person that have evil intent, your Holy Spirit has a way to protect, to guide us, and for us not to worry about that person because that person intent, that evil intent, all it does is have their sins to have them caught in their own rope and hold them. It does more harm to them. And it's our job just to grow the things of you and not to worry about everything that we try to, you know, try to prevent ourselves from getting to this or getting to that, but to grow in discernment so you can guide and lead us in our day-to-day -day walk. So, Father, can continue to guide and lead me in my day-to-day -day walk so that I can grow in discernment so I know when something comes my way that you don't want me to get involved in. So, Father, because you are all-knowing, so I just thank you and just thank you for having me to grow in the things of you. Father, you are an awesome God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so with that, just know that the best way to, to how can I say, to fight or ward off or be on your P's and Q's with these kind of things or with these kind of things is to grow in discernment and take whatever to the Lord and pray about it, you know, and pray and let the Holy Spirit guide you in these things. If you came across this video and you do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all you have to do is repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you have a relationship, all you have to do is continue to grow, 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 be the brightest light you could be. Read your Bible, walk in obedience, and pray, pray, pray. I'm Dr. Lee. Thanks for watching. Let go, let God, and keep it moving. Take care.